This is the Assembly Hall in Champaign-Urbana, and this is it. The state championship in Class AA is on the air. Welcome again, everyone. I'm Frank Bassoni, along with Jim Turpin and Coach Dick Campbell of Elmhurst, York, and we welcome you to the championship game for 1981. The song says, here's your miracle, stand up and fight. And tonight, for Class A's honors, Quincy and Proviso East will stand up and fight. And Jim and Dick, you have a chance to analyze this game and tell us how it might go. Thank you, Frank. It's difficult to know how it might go. Uh, everybody said that uh, Quincy, the number one team, rated that way all year long, Dick Campbell. Do you think this uh, ball club tonight, Proviso East, can handle them or even make it close? Nobody else has been able to do that yet. Quincy has done nothing to disprove uh, the early evaluation, and uh, they, they have been strong. There's no question about that. They've got a little more rest than Proviso East, having played that earlier game. And the two games they played, actually the three games they played prior to this, have been walkaways. They have had been able to substitute throughout the game. They've really not been pushed. Proviso, on the other hand, has had to play a super tough game against Marist in the super sectional. They've had two very tough games down here on the floor in Champaign. Uh, however, they're playing on a on a upbeat, and uh, I think they can. Uh, they're out of my conference, so I really do believe they can. Dick, we'll talk some more about that in just a moment. But right now, we're bringing in Frank Lolino, the coach of Chicago Westinghouse. Nice going, big guy. Hey, good I'm going. Tired. I feel great. We took third. That's great. How's your ball club feeling right now? Pretty good, well, I suppose. I imagine they're pretty high. You know, I feel pretty good about. It. We set a what a tournament record with 63 rebounds. So you know, we've done. We accomplished what we wanted to do. I think. Frank, only two teams go out winning in the state, and you're one of them. Well, I can say it feels good to be here. We've worked hard, and I'm proud to be the coach of that team. Frank, what about the uh, the competition? You had an awfully tough road to get down here. Do you think that has an effect on uh, not only your ball club, but anybody that comes out of the uh, the public league? Well, I tell you, we played Robeson, a fine team. King, a fine team. Uh, Simeon. And then we came back and played Marshall. Uh, I don't know. I mean, the competition that we played, those four teams could have just as easily, you know, if you brought four teams down here at one time and played any of the four teams you have here, uh, you'd have a good tournament. This must have been a piece of cake tonight. You still got your vest and your tie on. Yeah, it was easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, Westinghouse and Westinghouse basketball, with all of the success that you've brought it and the great players you've had, certainly everybody throughout the Middle West, probably across the country with the coverage of the players in the name of Westinghouse, uh, has, has been big news, and you've had a big part of it, Frank, so you should be very proud. Well, I'm very proud. I'm, you know, I'm trying to, to build a reputation, not live on one. Yet this was a team that was out without the uh, Mark Aguirres and the, the Eddie Johnsons and those kind of people. It was more of a team, wasn't it? Yeah, it was our whole thing here was, you know, we had kids that were ineligible in the mid-semester. It was the first time in eight years that I've ever had a student athlete who was ineligible at the beginning of the season. We played, you know, a tough Proviso West Christmas tournament, the St. Pat's Thanksgiving tournament. We, then we came back into the Red West. We played a couple of games in Morton and Chillicothe. They were in it, the Gordons, the St. Pat's, you know, and then come back in our own division and then go into the playoffs. We've had it, you know, it's been a fun year. Good way to end up. Well, Frank Lolino and Dick Campbell, let's talk a little bit about the championship game now. How do you see that? No, you don't have to make a prediction or anything, Frank. Just let us know about it. Well, I have to be biased. I'd like to see Proviso East get it because it's close to Chicago. Uh, they're both fine ball clubs. Uh, I, I hope both of the teams are rested enough. And you know, I think, we honestly, took we took a lot of the spunk out of Proviso. I hope that they're able to come back and do a job on them. Well, Quincy had an easy uh, go in the semifinals, and then uh, your ball club and Proviso really went at each other, and that ball game was really in doubt until the last minute. And uh, they played the second game. They've had less rest, and uh, that might very well have an effect on this game. Yeah, you've got, you know, Quincy's well-disciplined. You've got two fine coaches. They're well-disciplined uh, on offense, on defense. Uh, I think it's going to be a, a very good game to watch as a spectator, and, you know, low turnovers will be the, the, the winner of it. What do you think about the psychological atmosphere for Proviso East? You know, everybody has come in to playing them with the thought that they're invincible. Do you think East will be taken in by that sort of an attitude? No, they said the same thing with uh, Simeon and Marshall. You know, it's just a reputation and, uh, you know, just a record. Those records don't win state championships. You're going to have to put it on the line and play it the way it is. I think that's well said, Frank. Well said. Nice going, Frank. Well, you know, 30 you. bad. 30. You're right. That's fine. Frank Lolino, the, the coach of Chicago Westinghouse. They just finished third in the ball game. And now we're going to meet. This is the athletic director at uh, Wheaton Central. Don't look so sad now. Yeah. You're down to the final four. And uh, 
you guys uh, really played great. And as a matter of fact, uh, there was a good opportunity there to win that ball game. It was right down to the wire. Yeah, our kids have played real well all through the tournament. Uh, yeah, we had a, a good opportunity, but that's a break to the game, and that's what basketball is all about, I suspect. And uh, I'm, I'm real pleased with our kids. They played well all year. They're a, a fantastic bunch of kids. They've been together for four years. They play for a fantastic coach. I mean, he's a very underrated coach. It's a darn fantastic school system, and I wish people in Wheaton would understand that. It's a tremendous town, so I'm real pleased. This is the first time in, I think, 52 years that we've been in what you'd call the Sweet 16, although in 66 we got beat by Thornton, who went on to wipe up the tournament field. And it's interesting to note at that time, Don McGee was the freshman coach at Thornton. Uh, of the winning championship team. So all in all, we're just happy to be here and uh, our kids have been very representative and I think our student body has been one of the best acting and spirited, spirited uh, student body I've seen down here in many years. I mean, they've really done a good job. I was gonna ask you, you as athletic director, just exactly what does it mean to your school and your community to get all the way down to Champaign? Well, from the student body, I think I've never seen more cohesiveness uh, probably in the last 15 years. In 66, we were uh, very cohesive, but we were a bigger school, and we've been a little bit in the doldrums because of our financial problems in Wheaton, but I think if anything's gonna unite us, it's gotta be this, because if anybody in Wheaton is watching this game and all the games throughout the tournament, this is where it's at, is student participation, whether it's Wheaton or Quincy or anybody else, and, and looking in the stands and seeing that student body react we had, uh, I'd say, about 1,500 Wheaton people down here. I know that there was less than 200 kids left in school. Hey, nice going. Congratulations to you. Thank Job you. well done. Thank you. Thank you. The athletic director at Wheaton Central, and now Liz Astroth coming in, the executive secretary of the Illinois High School Association. Liz, first of all, congratulations on another very fine tournament. Uh, people are really excited around here, waiting this championship game. Thanks, Jim. It's it's unusual to have an undefeated team of the caliber of Quincy, and we're, I think everyone's looking forward to seeing them play. Now, you've seen uh, teams for a long, long time now. Many people are comparing this Quincy team to the unbeaten Thorn Ridge team in uh, the early 70s. What do you think? Are they in that class? Well, they're in that class. I think this is just one of the great teams we've had. I don't like to compare teams because we've had some outstanding teams in the state of Illinois. Uh, Jim, there have been 18 undefeated teams that have come into this championship game, and nine of them have won, nine of them have lost. So uh, it has happened before, both win and lose with that undefeated record. Well, Liz, you had the Class A last week, the Class AA this time, and now next weekend it's the girls' turn. Yes, we'll have the Class A and Class AA girls' tournament next week starting Thursday through Saturday, and we're looking forward to We have an undefeated team going there. East St. Louis and Lincoln in the Class AA was undefeated last year. They're still undefeated this year. Now, as far as your television network is concerned, Liz, uh, what all have you had on this year? I know we've still got the, the girls coming up in the track meet yet to do, but you've had a bunch of events already. Yes, we've had uh, boys swimming and the girls gymnastics, and they were uh, excellent telecasts. And uh, you have plans for the, the girls and boys track meet, I believe. Yes, that'll be uh, uh, televised live. The boys part will be live, and the girls will be televised taped. At the same time, the boys is being te televised live. Now, you say you don't want to make uh, compare any teams. I don't suppose you want to make any predictions either about this championship game. No, I let Dick Campbell do that. He knows oh, I will predict. ask him. Dick, what do you think? Well, before I say that, I, I have to uh, make a comment. Seeing Milt Sprunger yesterday, who, uh, who was the assistant to Al Willis for so many years, uh, during a very simplistic type of approach to athletics because there was only the one, the one class system. Uh, there wasn't girls competition yet. There wasn't television. The game is, uh, the, your job is really expanded, proliferated, has it not, Liz? It certainly has, Dick. We have gone from nine sports uh, to 23 sports in the IHSA, and actually with classes, 33 different state championships versus the nine that I came into and helped conduct 14 years ago. Liz, congratulations on another fine tournament. Thanks, Best of Dick. luck to you. Thanks, Dick. Liz Astroff, the head man of the Illinois High School Association, Reminder now that one of your network sponsors is Country Companies Insurance. 
This is Jerry Leggett, the head man at Quincy, and uh, Jerry was just telling me that you've got people not only on this side, which appears to be the Quincy side, but all around. How many tickets did you sell over there? We bought every ticket that any other town didn't want, you know, and it's well, we got all the Quincy section filled, and we got everybody else's section filled at the top, the tickets they, that they would sell us. Who's minding the store back home? There's no one back home, but there's a few people watching you, I'm sure, Jim. Let's talk about your ball club a little bit. Uh, what kind of pressure was put on this team when they were ranked number one uh, when the season began? And, and when you're ranked number one and you continue to win and you go on and on and on and on like that, uh, pressure must build uh, with every game. Tremendous pressure. As you said, they, they, right from the beginning, there was the pressure to win the state championship. You know, in our town of 47,000, this year they weren't just going to be happy with having a super season, a winning season. They wanted that state title. And uh, I think they're going to get it. I think finally they're going to get it. It's been 47 years since Quincy won it, 1934, and they're going to win it again tonight, Jim. Uh, Jerry, you won a bunch of ball games in the last two or three years. Oh, how many? 90 some? Uh, we're 90 and four for the last three years. Two years ago, we were 32 and all going into this game, and we ended up 32 and one. And this year, it's going to be 33 and all, I think. Uh, no more 32s and ones, huh? It's, it's the result of so much work, you know, so many hours of work by all these youngsters and my coaching staff, and also, you know, it goes clear back to the people who coached me. You know, I wish they could be here. Jack Foley and Norm Zebel were my coaches at Moline High, and I had the greatest college coach. I had, uh, I had Dolph Stanley at Floyd College for four years. And all that's going to go into this ball game. You know that, uh, well, that's quite a history to go into this one. It's a lot of years. You know, uh, Jerry, we were talking this morning about uh, why it is in places like Quincy and Lincoln and uh, just a few other, a handful of places that basketball is so strong and still going, whereas in many places uh, it's down just a bit and attendance is declining and, and not the interest. How do you account for that? Well, it's hard for me to account for it because we're one of the hotbeds. We are the hotbed. We're the pocket where it hasn't changed. I don't know. I think there's so there's a great communication. There's, uh, there's a large number of things for youngsters to do and adults to do, but not in Quincy. There's only one thing in Quincy. And that's the basketball game. The high school basketball team. Let's talk about your team in a little bit of detail. You start with a big guy. He's on the point on that press, and that alone has to give you a tremendous advantage. Yeah, Michael, Payne Michael is Payne. really agile. Michael Payne at 6'10", plays the point of our press, and he's a true All-Stater, and it hasn't been announced uh, uh, too much yet, but he's been chosen for the United States team also to, to represent his country in the 52-nation uh, youth uh, Albert Schweitzer games in April. How terrific that is. But he's got some good help. He's got the, the Douglas brothers, and they look plenty good to me. They're both playing very well in this tournament. Uh, Bruce, of course, is a true All-Stater, and Dennis is going to be someday. Now, let's not put the cart before the horse, but uh, you uh, still have a solid nucleus even for next year. We think we're going to be pretty good in, in having Dennis Douglas back, Bruce Douglas back. Tim Houston's playing excellent ball in this tournament. He's a 6'7 junior. And then uh, Mark Sparrow and Mark Hoffman are getting into, uh, you know, 30 games during their junior year. They'd probably be starting for a lot of teams, but they're behind a couple of these All-State kids and gaining great experience. We're very optimistic for next year. We hope we can get back in the same game. You think you're going to win it? I think the kids are going to win it, not I. Good going, Jerry. You Congratulations much, to you. Thank Good you. luck to you. Thank you. Jerry Leggett, the head man at Quincy, now bringing in the opposition. Hello, Glenn. Glenn Wittenberg, the head coach at Proviso East. But Jerry Leggett just told me that he is very confident. He thinks that he said, I'm not going to win it, but I think my kids are going to win it. How, how, do, how are you feeling on your side of the camp? Well, we, uh, every, every high school in the state of Illinois strives for this position, and we're the one that's here. I'm very proud to be here. That was a very, very exciting ball game this afternoon, but it was the second game. It was uh, down to the wire. Uh, what kind of effect will that have on your ball club from a physical standpoint, Glenn? I can't, I can't answer that. It'll be answered here in a few minutes. Uh, do they appear to be tired, or can you get them all psyched up uh, because this is the championship game and you can rest all summer? Yeah, any high school kid's going to be psyched up for this type of game, and uh, they they probably already forgotten about their bruises and their tired muscles and so on. That was a wild one this afternoon. It was up and down the court, and I suppose we can uh, expect the same. You expect, I, I presume, that Quincy will press you from the outset. Oh, yes, I'm sure they will. Uh, we'll see zones, man-to-man, -man, full court pressure. Uh, they've got it all in their bag of tricks. And what do you intend to do to them? Well, we intend to run with them. Uh, uh, we're not going to slow the game down, uh, and uh, if we can get through the front part of their press, uh, we'll do all right. Now, you had a young man this afternoon that had a what appeared to be a, a kneecap injury. Uh, how is he? Ernest Ashford is here tonight and will start. Was it, did it stiffen up on him at all? It, it hasn't appeared to, no. 
Well, he looked like he was in a lot of pain when that happened, but I'm awfully pleased to hear because a young man plays all the way through the season. He certainly should have the opportunity to play in the championship game. Yes, well, I'm sure Ernest uh, would have come out here on crutches in order to start this game tonight, and uh, I'm all for him. Let's talk about some of your other personnel. Just name some of the other boys in the starting lineup for those that uh, may not be familiar with your team. Well, I just learned Ernest Hubbard is the leading scorer in this tournament so far, and uh, Justin Monaghan, our center, is, uh, has done an outstanding job all area all uh, season. Is a Chicago all area player, and uh, Corey Cooper and Tracy Anderson, the other two starters, are our quick uh, little uh, tandem of guards, and uh, they're doing very well. Terrific. Thank you. Good luck to you, Glenn. You're Thank down you. to the final two. Nice going. Now let's go back to Frank Bassoni. Frank. Thank you very much, Jim. It's Proviso East, the Pirates, and Quincy's Blue Devils here as we get ready for the championship game. And we'll be back uh, with those starting lineups and the play-by-play -play for you in just a moment. Right now, one of your networks find it all basketball season four, and they're here in number in the assembly hall at Champaign-Urbana for the game for the championship between Quincy and Proviso East. You see the, the records of the two teams. Quincy 32 and 0, and Jerry Leggett says it won't be 32 and 1 this year. Proviso East 28 and 4, and interestingly enough, they were 29 and 4 in 74 when they won the state title. In the Class A Double A consolation game tonight, Chicago Westinghouse, and you heard from Frank Lolino a few moments ago, defeated a tough Wheaton Central team, 53 to 47. Westinghouse wins third in the state. The Quincy Blue Devils out of Adams County. This is the 24th appearance in the 74 years. You see Quincy there near the Mississippi River in the far west, and of course Proviso East from Maywood from the West Suburban Conference in Cook County. You know, when we were talking, uh, gentlemen, about uh, Quincy, uh, Roger Stevens from Antioch, the head coach there, was asked after their game, is there anything that Quincy lacks? And Roger Stevens says, yeah, they don't have a guy 10 feet tall. They do seem to have most other no, things. But they got one almost 7 feet tall, and he is really a player, Michael Payne. And we were talking, I, I suppose you heard, Frank, and uh, I talked to Jerry Leggett about him handling the point on that press. And Dick Campbell, that's got to be devastating to a guard not accustomed to a player that size bringing the ball down the court trying to get it by him. Well, that's right. He's 6'10", and he plays 10 foot tall, especially against the press out in front. You bet. You know, one thing that uh, Glenn Wittenberg said interested me, and that was that if we get by the front part of that press, we'll do all right. And you know, with a guy like Ernest Hubbard handling the ball, they might be able to do it. Yeah, with quickness, they'll scoot under it. They'll probably reverse the ball, bring it back uh, the way people have done before. Uh, they'll turn it over a few times, but uh, they'll also force it to be turned over on the other end. It seems like uh, at least the two ball games that we've seen that it's been Quincy in the first two or three minutes that devastated the opposition. They had them, well, what, 19 to 2 this afternoon. I'm sure Glenn Wittenberg and Proviso is very aware of that, and they might even do something strange to slow that tempo down just for a moment at the start of the game. They, they might uh, come out and, and try to uh, make sure that they can the get Campbell's a bucket shaking or two. his head no, no on that. No, no way. There's no, there isn't such a word in their vocabulary as slowing it down. They'll take it to them. There's one fact here. Quincy's been in this final game six times, and uh, they've only won it once up to this time, and uh, Proviso East has been in there twice, and they won it both times. So they're, they get to the final game. They've won it before, and, and I think they'd like to try to get that doggone thing back in Maywood for the third time. Indeed, a, quite a record. And there you can see the third and fourth place trophies, which will be awarded to Chicago Westinghouse and to Wheaton Central. And we'll take a look at those uh, gentlemen getting their awards at the halftime of this game. Now the teams have been called over to the sidelines. We're all set for the introductions of the starting lineups and the meeting the players and coaches involved in this championship. And now for those starting lineups. Uh, well, let's, yeah, first we're going to have the uh, Star Spangled Banner. All of us get a little excited for the title game, guys. You know, it's, uh, we want to get the game started, and the uh, color guard is going to come out first, and the band from Taylorville is here. And the color guard is about to come out onto the court at the assembly hall. As I look around the assembly hall, there is a, indeed an excellent crowd. Jerry Leggett indicated that the... Quincy fans uh, bought every ticket that uh, they could possibly buy from other schools, and there is a, quite a throng here gathered for what should be a very exciting championship game. And now the color guard comes out onto the court, and we'll have the presentation of the colors and the playing of our national anthem.
in the background gentlemen and it's because there is an absolutely remarkable crowd here for this championship game and I'm delighted to see that now let's go to the starting lineups and the players involved in the game here's the PA announcer Tom Trent ladies and gentlemen let's meet the people involved in tonight's championship game first for the Pirates of Proviso East High School with a record of 28 wins four losses The head coach of the Pirates, Glenn Wittenberg. Number 13, Lawrence Mack. Number 21, Maurice Bryson. Number 23, Danny Austin. Number 33, Daryl McDonald. Number 41, Eric Sims. Number 45, Donald Conrad. Number 51, Ronald Armstrong. And now let's meet the starting lineup for the Pirates of Proviso East High School from Maywood. At forward, a senior, six feet two, number 35, Ernest Ashford. At a bruised kneecap in the semifinal, he's starting their second leading rebounder. At forward, a junior, six feet tall, number 25, Tracy Henderson. He's had an absolutely outstanding tournament. Starting at center for the Pirates, a senior, 6'5", number 43, Justine Monaghan. He gets eight rebounds and nearly 18 points a game. Starting a guard for Proviso East, the senior, 5'10", number 11, Ernest Hubbard. The leading scorer in the tournament with 28 against Moline. And the other guard for the Pirates, a senior, 5'11", number 31, Corey Cooper. A swirling dervish in the backcourt, averaging 11 and a half. And now let's meet the Blue Devils of Quincy High School. A perfect record of 32 wins and no losses. The head coach of the Blue Devils, Jerry Leggett. Number three, Joel Myers. Number four, Mark Kaufman. Number five, Mark Foley. Number 10, Mark Sparrow. Number 14, Dave Sandercock. Number 34, John Leffer. Number 44, Tim Huseman. And now let's meet the starting lineup for the Quincy Blue Devils. At forward, a senior, 6 feet 3, number 32, Richie Hawkins. And he threw in a 70-foot shot in this tournament. 
At forward, a sophomore, 6'4", number 50, Dennis Douglas. A big guy at 225 pounds, averaging 11'7". Starting at center for the Blue Devils, a senior, 6 feet 10, number 42, Michael Payne. First team All-State, there he is at 6'10 and a half. At one guard, a junior, 6'3", number 24, Bruce Douglas. Another first team All-Stater, an absolutely superb athlete. And the other guard for the Blue Devils, a senior, 6'1", number 30, Scott Allen. A quick and tough leader of the Blue Devils. If you don't think there's an emotion here tonight, there's an absolute sea of blue up behind us, across the way, the proviso. And here are the officials for the title game, John Bittner of Brighton, Robert Conti of DuCoin. We'll be back with a tip-off in a moment. One of your network sponsors, Country Companies Insurance. At the Assembly Hall, it's hats and horns time. We're ready for the title game. We're going to have one to make a quick uh, look at what happens those first few times down the court. Quincy's gotten off so fast, and we want to look for that early blitz and maybe the ability to counter it, and also their uh, proviso's ability to handle the press. Quincy is wearing the white, the blue double. The Pirates are in the royal blue with the white trim. Michael Payne at 6'10 and a half goes into the middle against Justin Monaghan at 6'5. We're all set for action. Hope you enjoy it. Proviso East with the ball. Tracy Henderson stop and pop. Bruce Douglas has it for Quincy the other way. Three on one. Lob to the goal. Scott Allen missed it. Two tips. Proviso East rebound. Sparkling action. Here we go. Ernest Hubbard right to left. Hubbard between the rings. Goes on the left side to Corey Cooper. He's going to shoot from 20 feet. Yes! They drew first blood. It's a 1-2-2 zone that Quincy's in and about what we'd have expected. That's the first time Quincy's been behind in Champaign. Press. Good press. Near steal. There's a... Dennis Douglas fell down and kicked it ahead. Nicely to his brother Bruce who shoots. Tipped out by Payne. Rebound foul. It's on Justin Monaghan. Justin up after the ball. Make contact. Reaching in. We'll take a look at it again. There's the shot. A tip. And coming up over the top, right in there, reaching in a good call. Ernest Ashford is in the starting lineup. He had a bruised knee in the semifinal for Proviso, but he's in there. Here's Bruce Douglas. He's showing no ill effect to it at the moment. Let's see what Proviso East is doing defensively. It's his zone. Mike Payne in the right corner to Richie Hawken. Scott Allen from 15. Yes. The game is tied. No press. No press. Well, that's interesting. The Blue Devil press is not present at the moment. They're in the zone defense, and they fall back. Here's Corey Cooper going to the left. Ernest Hubbard's first shot is on the way. Rolling out. Tipped out of there, and Bruce Douglas runs. Hawkins on the fly. Stolen by Proviso East with the only other way. Tracy Henderson. Henderson out to Cooper. Just underway in the Class AA title game. Two fine basketball teams. Corey Cooper eyes a shot and goes in the corner to Henderson. Monaghan posts up downstairs against Payne. Cooper slides into the paint, comes back outside to Hubbard. His shot is bouncing, no. Tipped way out on the fly to Dennis Douglas. Here comes Allen, lay it up, and stop. By Payne. The tip out zone, fast break. That, uh, that's a product of Rolf Stanley at Beloit. And of course, they mentioned at the top of the show that he played for four years for him up there at Beloit. And that was an old technique of his. Here's Corey Cooper trying to answer on the right. He tipped it out again. That's Dennis Douglas. Bruce Douglas ran over Corey Cooper for an offensive foul. Good anticipation by Cooper. Yeah, right. There's that tip out coming. The tip out, the front line's coming out of the court. Corey stepped, uh, Corey stepped in there and drew it on Bruce Douglas. Well, Quincy saved something for a title game they didn't do earlier. That's the tip out. And they come on the left wing to Henderson, Proviso East. Quincy has a two-point advantage. Henderson eyes it up, didn't pull the trigger. Hubbard's in the corner. At the top of the key is Cooper. He slides to the right, gives to Ashford. Quincy in a zone defense, a near steal by Allen. Let's see, the ball's out of bounds to Quincy. Good defensive play by Scott Allen. 
You're looking at Dennis Douglas who threw, threw it in. Hawkins against Henderson. Look at the good pressure by Proviso E. And the sophomore backs it up to his brother Ruth. Proviso E's playing man to man now. There's a man falling down. The ball goes to Scott Allen on the wing. Bruce Douglas. Up high off the board and the rebound to Henderson. Down the other end to Corey Cooper. To the goal. He is hammered by Bruce Douglas. And that's the second foul on Douglas. Now we talked a little bit about that. Uh, the possibility of somebody like that getting in early foul trouble. There it is. Nice lead pass. He takes it to the hoop. Douglas comes in. Gets him with the body. So many of these proviso players have such good body control, especially Hubbard and Cooper. They can glide in the air and adjust the ball. You're talking about not uh, having the press on. They also did not press, remember, in the super section of the game against Kankakee Westview. Although they've done a good job of pressing in the first two games here, Frank. Indeed they have. Corey Cooper makes the free throw. Quincy four, proviso East three, 4.56 to go in the opening quarter. Cooper another. Dennis Douglas has another rebound. Quincy comes down on the right to Bruce Douglas. Corner, it's Hawkins. He has a runner up there. Not good. Monaghan a gun to the rebound, and he's been a rebounding bandit in this one. Well, he's had a good tournament. He had 14 this afternoon against Westinghouse. Hubbard fakes, goes back to the right. Tracy Henderson eyes the zone, kicks the ball over to Cooper. Cooper fakes the pass. They post up Ashford downstairs. He goes into the lane and scores. No basket. Travel in violation. A tough break for Proviso. That's her. Yeah, that's a common thing. They, they uh, make the pump fake and shuffle the feet. Second turnover. Turnovers are even. At two apiece. Bruce Douglas goes by Cooper on the right. He flies into the front court. He's going all the way to the baseline. Allen fakes, steps in, is hemmed in now, and wheels it out to Douglas. Mike Payne has a 10-footer. Foul on Tracy Henderson. Country Company's insurance and its nearly 1,000 agents in Illinois are happy to be a part of this telecast, and we hope you're enjoying this action. Here's Michael Payne, who says he will attend the University of Iowa. His dad, Tom, was an all-state player in 1954 at Quincy. And Michael Payne makes it 5-3, to three, Blue Devils. Here's the rebound. Proviso has it. They're quite a bit smaller than Quincy, but they're holding their own on the board right now. Tracy Henderson, quick move into the front court. Monaghan slides through the lane. Henderson fakes and looks. Let's see what they do. They're standing a bit now. Hubbard. On the right wing is Cooper. They exchange outside. Quincy's zone shift. And they throw over the zone to Cooper. He steps in, puts it up, blocked by Payne. Here comes Douglas on the move. Douglas into the left side. He fakes and gives in the middle to Richie Hawkins for a layup that missed. But Michael Payne has a one-handed difference. Payne has certainly been a force at both ends in this early going. He's the hoop defender down there. He's followed in for two or three baskets at the other end. Payne has five points in the game. Here's a shot partially blocked again by Quincy. Way ahead is Scott Allen. The Blue Devils run one in. It's nine to three. And Proviso East is going to have to stop the action. As Quincy's got him to go. With three minutes and 11 seconds to go in the first quarter. Quincy 9, Proviso East 3, one of your network sponsors, DeKalb Ag Research. Came six times now, but their only victory was in 1934 when they won over Harvey Thornton by 12. Sam Storby was the coach that year. Uh, we have to give a big credit here to the game tactic uh, of the tip-out zone. We haven't seen that in the tournament, and Coach Leggett saved that for the right spot. He figured that they could probably break against Proviso. And, uh, boy, has it been effective here early. And they've got a guy flying the other end all the time. Frank, it's nice to have a veteran color man that can remember back that far. He was at the game. I know it. On the right side, Tracy Henderson has the ball, looking into the middle. Monaghan posts up, and Henderson tries one. He got it. Well, nine to five now as Henderson hit from the right wing. Good pressure in the backcourt by the Pirates. The Blue Devils have the Douglas brothers bringing the ball up. And they get it up there now. Michael Payne at 6'10 and a half has really been a force in the middle. And he comes out now 
at a high post. Proviso has shifted now from their zone press back into the 1 2 2 zone. Inside, Dennis Douglas turns and scores. 11 to 5 as Dennis Douglas gives Quincy a six point lead at 2 30 to go in the first quarter. Championship game of Illinois. Corey Cooper in the lane. Kicks it off, intended it for Ernest Ashford, but Payne fouled him. No, 31. Oh, Corey Cooper on the push. Well, the way Payne reacted for a moment, I thought they had called him for a foul. Instead, it's on Cooper. And Quincy has the ball. They're throwing at the length of the court from one Douglas to the other. Amazing. Dennis Douglas threw the ball 80 feet. Douglas to Douglas, airbound. 13 to 5. The Blue Devils, impressive again. But Proviso East won't go away. Here's Cooper in the lane. Down low to Ashford. A nice pass inside and a foul on Dennis Douglas. You know, Dennis Douglas, you see on his screen there, he turned 16 years old yesterday. And the cheerleaders gave him a, a teddy bear. They call him the Big Brown Bear. <laughs> 35 is Ernest Ashford. Will shoot for the Pirates. Trying to pull them back from an eight-point deficit. He hit his first. Two championship games in 69, Coach Tom Milliken, and in 74, Coach Glenn Wittenberg, the current proviso coach. Ashford another. Paying the board. Quincy by seven at the two-minute mark. Scott Allen comes up to Bruce Douglas. Man to man this time. Or is it? Yes, it is. yes, it is. Off the free throw. Scott Allen matches up outside to Payne. Payne looks over the right side to Richie Hawkins. They exchange. Look how patient Quincy is now. Here's Scott Allen to Mike Payne. Payne flees inside to Dennis Douglas, and he got his bulk and turned and scored. Quincy's team to six. Quincy's a great passing team. They find that open man. They all give it up. Tracy Henderson in the corner. Pirates need a basket. Here's a whistle and traveling instead. And right now, the third turnover on Proviso gives the ball to Quincy. Jerry Leggett with his familiar blue towel. Coach Leggett patted the top of his head in, uh, in some type of a signal. I don't know whether it's a delay game for the last shot in the quarter or it's a little early for that. Early as 1.10 to go, first quarter. Bruce Douglas holds it. Look out for the alley-oop, maybe. That would be to Mike Payne, who's 42 with the ball. Scott Allen, wing right. They're packed in pretty good now, wanting Quincy to shoot outside. Here's a lob inside, and a foul on Justin Monaghan to be his second. By Monaghan. Frank, the closest anybody has come to this Quincy ball club was Chicago Phillips. They got beat in overtime 76 to 75. A couple of other close games. Tell you about it in a minute. Payne's bank shot doesn't go, but Dennis Douglas has the rebound, and he is fouled. Let's check who that's on. Corey Cooper, I believe. That's it. It's a second. This ball club also lost to Kankakee Eastridge 67 63, to New Lenox Providence 47 42, and to Lincoln in the Decatur sectional 64 58. But other than that, mostly big, big margins. Dennis Douglas scores. He's a sophomore. Proviso has not been able to get that ball to their prim their prime shooter, the leading scorer in this tournament, Ernest Hubbard. They're going to have to find him against that zone somewhere. The lead is building. It's 17 to 6 with 46 seconds to go in the first quarter. And Quincy once again, as they have in the other games of the tournament, builds an early advantage. Corey Cooper fakes. There's Hubbard. He steps to the left and shoots. Ah, yep. I got one. That might get him started. Nice uh, shot. He started out that ball game uh, this afternoon that way, too. They have to get him moving and, and get him penetrating to be real effective. Proviso East is capable of turning the ball over. They can't this time. And Richie Hawkins comes into the lane for a runner that doesn't go. Bruce, Bruce Douglas does have it and score. 13 seconds on the clock. Quincy by 11. Four points by Bruce Douglas. Here's Hubbard again. It's short. 
Quincy rebounds. They'll have a chance with three, with two, and a whistle traveling violation on the Blue Devils with one second to go in the first quarter. And the first reserve comes in. Number 41, Eric Sims, replaces Ernest Ashford. I noticed the proviso didn't go to the board slide last time on that shot. Uh, I don't know whether it's fatigue or whether they're worried about getting back on defense. That'll count if it goes. It does not go, and that's the end of the opening quarter. The Blue Devils of Quincy, 19, Proviso East 8. Now let's take time out for this message. What can we say? We're proud of you all the way. You Blue Devils have made Quincy look great in Quincy, in Decatur, in Normal, and in Champaign. These Blue Devil boosters are regional, sectional, super sectional, and state proud of you. Damon Hurdle Jewelers, Tappy's Sporting Goods, Riley Drugstore, Frank's Pontiac, Floor World, Hollander Tire Company. Hey Blue Devils, you're super sensational. You're state sensational. You're the greatest. Quincy's proud of you. Quincy leading here at the end of the first period by a score of 19 to 8. These two ball clubs just came flying at each other. It was very, very close in the first couple of minutes. And then Quincy just pulled away. They lead it here 19 to 8. They're trying to become another unbeaten state champion. Haven't been a lot of them. Rockford in 1911, Taylorville in 1944, Mount Vernon in 50, LaGrange in 53, Chicago Marshall in 58, Collinsville in 61, LaGrange Lions in 70, Dalton Thorn Ridge in 72, and Lockport Central in 78. You saw the team stats there while Jim was giving you the undefeated title holders. And Quincy had the lead in shooting 44-27. Here's inside to Sims. His shot is blocked by Payne. Sims got it again. He's fouled. Nice effort by Eric Sims on a second shot. Quincy shot 8 of 18 in the first quarter, 44%. Proviso East 3 of 11, that's 27%. Rebounds, an unbelievable advantage, 16 to 4 for Quincy. 16 to 4, there you see it. And the turnover is exactly even. This is Eric Sims, 6'3 senior, who missed the free throw. You have to do everything well against Quincy because they have so many weapons. Sims has replaced Ashford. I don't believe Ashford's able to get off that knee. Here's the shot short, and Quincy has the rebound. That's Dennis Douglas. He handles the ball pretty well for a guy his size, and he gives it off to his brother, Bruce. He's an All-Stater. Jerry Leggett said at one time in his career, Bruce Douglas couldn't shoot at all. Now he's a fine, fine shooter. He threw the ball, intended for Michael Payne, but out of bounds. Even Mike Payne couldn't grab that one. The fifth turnover on Quincy and a smile from the head coach. Proviso East comes up. On the left side, that's Tracy Henderson and a whistle. And Henderson is fouled by Dennis Douglas as Glenn Wittenberg looks on. In the bonus, and Tracy Henderson will go to the foul line. Second foul on D. Douglas. Henderson. Gets this one in and will now try to get Proviso East back within nine. 7.25 to go in the first half. Quincy from the Western Big Six. Moline, West Suburban. Free throw is not good and three out of the last four foul shots by East go off. A foul is on Eric Sims on the rebound. Frank, this uh, Quincy team has been compared by many to the great Thornridge teams. Back in 1972, Thornridge, in the tournament, beat Collinsville 95-66 to at the 29-point margin. Peoria Emanuel 71-52 to at 19-point margin. And in the title game against Quincy, it was 104-69, to 35-point margin in the title game. Douglas hit. 20-9, the Blue Devils. And there's a look at the Taylorville High School band, at least part of them. Next one, Dennis Douglas. Free throw is not good, but Michael Payne follows. No, Justin Monaghan got that one. And on the move, Tracy Henderson. Proviso East needs a hoop here. And Hubbard shoots it up. They're cold, and the Blue Devils take advantage. Look at Payne move with the ball at 6'10 and a half. A 360 and a shot. 
Rebound saved nicely by the Pirates. Here they come. Pretty That's Corey nice, Cooper. Pretty nice ball handling for a 6'10 player. Amazing. Wonder if Lou Dolson's here. Left wing, Corey Cooper with a hand. In the corner, Hubbard looks inside. They haven't been able to get the ball inside much at all. Monaghan is fronted by Hawkins, and behind him is Payne. Near steal by Quincy. The Proviso East Pirates keep control. They're in blue, Quincy in white. Quincy leading by 11. We're in the second quarter at the Assembly Hall. I'm Frank Bassoni along with Jim Turpin and Dick Campbell. Corey Cooper goes to the right baseline, turns, Payne's on him, and fouls him. Michael Payne picks up his second foul. You know, Bruce Douglas had two fouls real early and then is held from getting his third. Yeah, Proviso has taken that ball inside, and uh, they're drawing the fouls. I think they have to do that. They can't be intimidated by the inside blocking. Corey Cooper will have a chance now to shoot. One and. Cooper's very quick. Fine football player as well as a fine basketball player. He makes the first one 20 to 10. Proviso East is capable of getting a flurry of points. That's what they need. A hoop, turn one over and get another one. Get things rolling back their way. They're cold free throw shooting too. And Quincy comes up in the back. Nice ball handling there by Bruce Douglas. Baseline Hawkins whips it into Dennis Douglas. Up the ball. Nice execution. Slid down the line. Hit him going down the line for the layup. Dennis Douglas already has nine. His average is nearly 12. Here comes Hubbard. He fakes the man in the air and shoots. He made it, but it won't count traveling. Another tough break on Proviso East. In the third place game, Westinghouse 53. Wheaton Central 47. Chicago Westinghouse wins third. Dennis Douglas gets the ball against the Proviso East press. Tempo has been quick for the most part. Douglas seesaws in the front against Cooper. Lobbed to the goal. Tipped away from Payne. Picked up by Scott Allen. His shot, it wasn't a shot at all. He held on to it too long and got called for traveling. That's a sixth turnover for uh, Quincy. Now Quincy's still not in their vaunted press. Jerry Leggett pinwheels the blue towel as Proviso East comes down. They want to get within 10 if they can. 22 to 10 is Quincy's lead. Tracy Henderson slides to the left. Here's Monaghan shooting. Not good. Tip once, not good. And the next rebound to Michael Payne. What a force he's been. Michael Payne owning the bank board here. And Dennis Douglas spins in the front. Bruce Douglas, a 12-footer that's right there. That's eight for Bruce Douglas, or check at six. Five-minute mark, Quincy by 14. Proviso East gets the ball to Monaghan for a turnaround. It's too long. Richie Hawkins has it. And Proviso East, a much better shooting team than this, is very cold. Bruce Douglas, a magnificent move. He exchanged the ball in midair to the left hand, and it's high five. And Quincy shoots to be the 10th team undefeated in the state of Illinois. Time out on the court. Quincy leads by 16 at the 438 mark, and we'll continue our coverage of the Class AA Championship in a minute. One of your network sponsors, Country Companies Insurance. Expected, and we'll, if we do, uh, we'll ready to call it for you. All right, on the right is Corey Cooper coming with the ball for Proviso East. We've got two teams working on a state championship game, and Tracy Henderson's shot doesn't go for the Pirates, and a whistle under the basket, and let's see what the call is. Proviso East is just in a cold shooting situation right now, and it looks like the foul is going to go against Tracy Henderson. Here's two teams, both with a lot of talent, both can run like frightened deer, but right now, Proviso East is one of those spells where they can't get the ball to drop. Yeah, the uh, Quincy's come into this whole thing with the idea of we're the best, we're going to win. Uh, they're not making any bones about it, and, and they're just playing that way, too, and, and I guess that uh, maybe even Proviso's been swept up in it, and they're in a little trouble right now. Scott Allen's free throw rolls out, and Eric Sims rebounds. Sims has replaced Ernest Ashford. Nice pass by Henderson to Monaghan for two. Now that's what Proviso East does so well. They get down the court, and they whistle a pass off to the free man for two. 26-12 at the 4.08 mark, first half. Proviso East is capable of getting back. Here comes Payne, blocked from behind by Sims. Another block, but Payne got that one in. 
Payne's always scooping up whatever uh, whatever they defense, whatever they knock back. He gets back, gets it in the hole. Very active player at 6'10". 3.50 to go in the first half. Big crowd at the Assembly Hall for the championship game. Hubbard out of the dead corner. Rattled it out, and Payne's got another rebound out to Bruce Douglas. Three on two. Douglas to the left. Lost it. Out of bounds to Proviso East. The seventh turnover on the Blue Devils. Last time that Proviso East won this tournament was 74, and the leading scorer was Joe Ponsetto. Here's the shot outside and in. It was Tracy Henderson who hit it, and it's 28-14, Quincy. 3.20 to play, opening half. Here's the press for Proviso East, trying to turn one over. Here's Scott Allen, baseline, steps in, puts it off the board and missed it. The rebound is down, but picked up by Hawkins. Monaghan couldn't hold on to it. Ball's bouncing Quincy's way, and they've got themselves a 14-point lead in the ball. Right side, Dennis Douglas, holding quietly, waiting for something to break open. Payne is in the corner with it. Let's see what they're doing. Maybe they want Proviso East to come out and play the man-to-man. -man. There's a great bounce pass. Well, it went past Scott Allen that he saw him open. Looked like it was going to work, and the bounce pass went out of bounds. That's the eighth turnover, but you know that Quincy's turnovers are not, uh, are not returning on that basket by Proviso like they normally are off the press. It's just their failure to uh, take advantage of that possession at the other end. Proviso East has had some pretty good shots. They just can't get the ball to go in the basket in the early part of this game. And that's really hurt them. Corey Cooper finds the range. Cooper hits about an 18-footer on the left wing, and Quincy's lead is 12. Press in the backcourt. Proviso East needs a turnover, and there is a fine move by Bruce Douglas. He missed it, but just barged in and scored. Yeah, their job, their follow-up game is, is superb. Ten points for Bruce Douglas. You see the lead at 14. Tracy Henderson to the right corner. Corey Cooper looks down low for Sims and Monaghan. They're covered up. He goes across to Hubbard. He can shoot. He starts to move. He turns to Monaghan, who puts one in from 12 on the left side. And that might warm up Proviso East. Four points for Monaghan. A minute, 40 seconds to go in the first half. 30 to 18 is Quincy. There goes Bruce Douglas again. Look at him go to the goal. Proviso's got to get out of that half-court press. Uh, Douglas is just ripping him apart in the middle. He wheels down that lane, and he's devastating there. There's the man that knows it, and he's going to call timeout for Proviso East. 1.30 to go in the first half. Quincy has it 32 to 18. Though thus far, one of your network sponsors is DeKalb Ag Research. Play just back in now as Henderson comes to the right to Hubbard. His shot is not good. Rebound, Dennis Douglas. Quincy has it stolen. Here's the shot. It's good. Hubbard got it and put it in. So that might ignite Proviso Iskabet. They're down by 12. One ten to go, first half. Press is still on. Hawkins whips it up ahead for the first substitute in for uh, Quincy, and that's John Lepper, 34. He's in there for Michael Payne. And so is Tim Huseman in there, 44. In for Bruce Douglas. So they're not going to get the third foul of either one of those two. Holding high is Hawkins, 50 seconds. I think Proviso East would love to get out of here with only 10 down. They're 12 down now. Quincy has the ball. 40 seconds. What will happen? Scott Allen holding it. Hubbard tried for the steal. Hawkins fake. Quincy going for one, it looks like. Houston eyes it inside. Leper bounce past Dennis Douglas. Pretty good defense right now by Proviso. Here's Hawkins. He's on a high post right. Foul line. Daring Houston to shoot there. He won't. 18 seconds. Clock coming down, near steal by Henderson. Douglas got it with his good size. 12 seconds, Dennis Douglas, they're waiting for one. That's Scott Allen now. Seven, six, Richie Hawkins, five, four. Will Quincy score again at the buzzer? Whistle foul on Corey Cooper. And that's the third foul on Cooper. That's tough for Proviso because he's a key to their team, one of them at least. He really has been a penetrator here against that zone, and that, that's a tough foul to take right before the end of the half. John Lepper, a six, six and a half senior, averages 6.2 points a game, shoots one and. His free throw is short, 
Two seconds, one second, a steal, no basket, and that's the end of the first half of the championship game in the double A. The score, Quincy's Blue Devils 32 and the Pirates of Proviso East 20. We'll be back in just a moment. Now one of your network sponsors is Country Companies Insurance. Welcome back to our Class AA Championship game. My name is Dr. Joseph Sergio, and I am president of the Illinois High School Association Board of Directors and the principal of Steinmetz High School in Chicago. It doesn't seem as if we've been crowning champions in boys basketball in the two-class system for 10 years. But then again, it doesn't seem as if we've had the state tournament since 1908 either. Next year will be the 75th anniversary of the state high school basketball tournament in Illinois. It is the oldest state basketball tournament series in America, and we're proud of the accomplishment. We're proud, too, of the manner in which the young men and women who represent their schools play the game and display good sportsmanship. Thank you for joining us on this telecast, and thanks also for your support of all Illinois High School Association activities. Now we hope you enjoy the rest of the game of this 1980-81 boys basketball season, and we look forward to seeing you here again next week when the girls take the court. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we direct your attention to midcourt for the presentation of the third and fourth place teams and individual awards for the 1981 Boys Class AA State Basketball Tournament. Making the presentation will be members of the Illinois High School Association Board of Directors and Administrative Staff. Presenting medallions to the squad members of the fourth place team will be Mr. Charles Smith of Homewood Flossmore High School in Flossmore, who serves the IHSA as a member of the Board of Directors, and Mr. David Fry, who serves the IHSA as Associate Executive Secretary. At this time, please meet the Tigers of Wheaton Central High School, who finished the 1981 season in fourth place with a final record of 26 wins and seven losses. The principal of the school, Richard Rush. The head coach of the Tigers, Don McGee. <laughs> Assistant coach, Jim Rooney. <laughs> Sophomore coach, Bob Hoppenstedt. <laughs> Statistician, Lisa D. <laughs> Statistician, Karen Lackland. The ball boy, Andy Lutzenkirchen. Number 24, Dave Giordano. Number 14, Greg Freeman. Number 32, Jeff Bakke. Number 34, Bill Reinhardt. Number 13, John Holmes. Number 21, Steve Stevenson. Number 22, Guy Unterberg. Number 33, Mike Lutzenkirchen. Number 15, Todd Fanning. Number 31, Tori Larson. And number 25, George Turner. <laughs> Presenting medallions. To the squad members of the third place team will be Dr. Joseph Sergio of Steinmetz High School in Chicago, who serves the IHSA as president of the board of directors, and Mr. Gail Borton of West Frankfurt High School, who serves the IHSA as a member of the board of directors. At this time, please meet the Warriors of Westinghouse High School in Chicago, who finished the 1981 season in third place with a final record of 22 wins, 11 losses. The principal of the school, Raphael Sullivan. 
the head coach of the Warriors, Frank Lolino. <laughs> Assistant coach, George Capazano. Assistant coach, Roy Condotti. Co-captain, number 33, Melvin Bradley. The other co-captain, number 30, Eric Brown. Number 34, John Green. Number 54, Wayne Montgomery. Number 52, William Nixon. Number 20, Gary Cooper. Number 40, Aldere Moore. Audrey Moore, number 12, Delano Robinson. Number 10, Parrick Robinson. Number 22, Joe Cobbs. Number 42, Charles Giles. Number 14, Dwayne Hare. Manager, Orlando Woods. And manager, Raymond King. Now the fourth place trophy will be presented by Mr. Raymond Collier of the Aurora East High School in Aurora, who serves the IHSA as the treasurer of the board of directors. Will head coach Don McGee and the captains of the Tigers from Wheaton Central please step forward to receive the fourth place trophy. Mr. Collier, please. the third place trophy will be presented by Mr. William Yum, principal of Sterling Township High School in Sterling, who serves the IHSA as a member of the board of directors. Will head coach Frank Lulino and the captains of the Westinghouse Warriors please step forward. Your third place trophy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a big hand for our third and fourth place finishers. Douglas has nine, Michael Payne has seven, and Al uh, Allen with four, three players with two fouls. Hawkins didn't score in that first half. So Quincy has 12 out of Bruce Douglas, the leader. So East, 28 and four in the first half, and they're down by a dozen. They were led in scoring by Cooper with six, but he has three personal fouls. That's Corey Cooper in the first half, Henderson with five, Monaghan four, and Hubbard with four and Ashford has one. So the three fouls on Corey Cooper is a factor. Quincy shot in the first half, 14 of 30 from the field, 46%, nearly 47. And Proviso East, a 33 on 8 of 24. Free throw shooting, no bargain for either team, 50% for Quincy, 40 Proviso East. Look at this, rebounds, Quincy by 19, 29 to 10. Turnovers, Quincy with seven, Proviso East with five. A lot of those rebounds have been offensive rebounds too, and, and Mr. Payne uh, is really giving giving uh, Proviso East just that—a pain. He's been uh, scooping everything off the defensive board. He's been following up on the other end of the court on the offensive end, and still they're only 12 down. Proviso could get back in it. Okay, we'll continue our coverage of the Class AA championship in just a moment. So East 20. These two teams started running just as the concluding notes of the national anthem were sounded, and we've got. A big second half coming up, Jim. This Quincy Ball Club we talked about with that 32 and zip record. We sometimes forget that Proviso East has had a marvelous season as well. They're 28 and 4. 
Those four losses came to the Grange Lions by a 69-62 and then 64-62. They lost to Glenbard West by just two points, 58-56, and then to Westchester St. Joe, 79-66, but a very, very fine season, 28-4. And we want to once again congratulate Chicago Westinghouse, third in the state, Wheaton Central, fourth. I hope you enjoyed those awards they just justly received. Second half is underway. Proviso East in the blue with the basketball against Quincy. The Pirates are down by 12, and they mean to do something about it as Corey Cooper shoots the first one in. Cooper has eight. Remember, he has three personals. Now the press is on. Michael Payne comes to help in the back. Ten-point Quincy lead. That's about the slimmest lead that they've had in a long time, especially as late as the second half. They've got their starting lineup in. And that's Bruce Douglas to his brother Dennis. Looking down low, can't go there. Scott Allen can shoot. He missed that. He followed it, though, and got a 10-footer. It didn't go. Look at now for the battle. It's Michael Payne. Here's the rebound to Payne. 34, 22, seven minutes to go in the third quarter. Scott Allen to the goal. Allen slid all the way in and scored. 6.55 to go. Quincy builds the lead back to 14. They're challenged and they answer. There goes Tracy Henderson to the baseline and now to Corey Cooper. Look down the keyhole. Can Hubbard shoot? He missed that, but Monaghan's got the rebound. Steps in, put it up too short, and Payne cleared. Tough break for Proviso. They were inside and couldn't score. Look at the move by Dennis or Bruce Douglas. He fades and shoots. Monaghan a good board. He's a fine rebounder, this Monaghan. Now Corey Cooper comes to the left. He waits. He looks. Now it's Henderson. It's a zone defense by Quincy. Hubbard kicks the ball over to Monaghan. Steps in off the board. Here's a tip by Monaghan, and he is fouled. I think it's on Richie Hawkins. Yes, that's right. Uh, it looks like is starting to go to the boards a lot harder now. Here's a replay on that. I thought for a minute there there's going to be a, a charge on uh, Monaghan. Put it up, and here's the foul right in here, reaching in at 32. Proviso East will throw it in. It's Hubbard in the corner, and now Cooper. Proviso East is going to have to hit some shots from outside, and Cooper tries. Ooh, it rattled out. Allen tipped it to Bruce Douglas. Here he comes. Two on one. Douglas all the way. Lay it up and in. 14 points for the All-Stater, Bruce Douglas. 5.53 to go. It's a 16-point Quincy lead. And Tracy Henderson's shot is not good. Tip by Sims is not good. Sims starting in place of Ashford. Here comes Dennis Douglas thundering in. 13 points for Dennis Douglas. The big man can get out and run. He really, uh, really moves up and down the court for a sophomore. Now a timeout for Viso East. Vincy by 40 to 22. We'll be back in a moment. One of your network sponsors is DeKalb Ag Research those things one of their rushes they had one of their rushes and of course Proviso I don't think has had one yet and they're noted for their rushes let's see if they can develop one Hubbard look at the 2-3 zone packed in tight Monaghan comes outside to get the ball and overshoots Scott Allen has it for Quincy the Blue Demon uh, the Blue Devils fans are really excited here's a pass from Bruce Douglas to Richie Hawkins for two and now the lead goes to 20 I think they're starting to smell it all now. I know they thought they could do it, but it's getting close now with a 20-point lead in that middle of the third quarter. Corey Cooper with the ball. Now Monaghan, he has it outside. Cooper tries from 20. It's bouncing not good. Look at the rebound by Henderson. He's fouled by Richie Hawkins. Take a look at this, Dick. Yes, Henderson went to that board awful strong, and uh, uh, went to that board awful strong. But Hawkins got him on the way up. Here, here's the replay. There it is right there, 32. All right, Henderson will throw it in for Proviso East. They need some baskets, and Hubbard shoots it in. Hubbard hit along the baseline. Hubbard has six. He came into the game as the leading scorer in the tournament. Certainly a member of the all-tournament team. 4.46 to go in the third. You see the lead for Quincy. It's 42 to 24, actually. 18-point advantage at 4.35. Now Bruce Douglas.
Bruce Douglas comes to the left to Scott Allen. Turn into Payne. He lays it up off the glass. Yeah, he was in traffic. He got bumped, but he stayed with the shot and went down. Payne's just too tall in there. He gets the ball in the rafters. Corey Cooper looks over the zone. 409 to go. A 20 point Quincy lead. Look at Hubbard slide to the left. Hubbard can really move. Hubbard's going to eye one up from 20. He's cut loose now. He's just going to have to have to throw caution to the wind and try to get him back in here. This man-to-man -man press is uh, not very effective because Monaghan is not playing tight on Payne. And they just throw it into him and he kicks it back to the guards. Hubbard has eight. Now Bruce Douglas way outside. Fine looking specimen of young player. Look at him inside. Cleared his way through. Turned to the right and banked it in. 46 to 26 and that's a bulging 16 for Bruce Douglas as the Quincy cheerleaders are having fun. Versatility of Bruce Douglas. He posts up inside. He runs the break. Here's Corey Cooper trying to answer on the other side. There's the tip out by Allen. On the fly, it's Bruce Douglas again. Dish off to Payne. He went up, but he forgot something. He didn't have the ball when he went to the goal. It went out of bounds. And coming into the lineup for Proviso East is 35, Ernest Ashford, a starter, and 33, Daryl McDonald, a six foot senior. Sims and Corey Cooper. Get a rest. Here's a lob outside to Hawkins for a pop. It didn't go. And look at Dennis Douglas from behind the man. Tip it in. 48 to 26. Dennis Douglas with 15. The Douglas brothers with 31 points. Five more than Proviso has. Hubbard shoots. And here comes Hubbard. He has 10. Hubbard's the leading scorer in the tournament and coming into this game with 73. He can light it up. Here's another great one. Bruce Douglas. He's outside at the top of the key. 20 feet from the basket or more. On the right wing it goes to Hawkins. A post up by Dennis Douglas. Turn around one hander. Too long but Mike Payne puts it back. He missed. Ashford has the rebound. His knees bothering him. He's barely able to get up down the court now. Tracy Henderson on the fly. And the foul is on Quincy's Dennis Douglas. A nice drive to the basket there by Tracy Henderson. He spotted a, uh, a split there and went down the lane. And uh, young Dennis Douglas got over there and threw the foul. That certainly would have counted. Jim Turpin, how about that all-tournament team? Just been announced that both Associated Press and United Press International agree the Associated Press team selected by uh, the news media, the UPI, by the coaches. It's Michael Payne and Bruce Douglas, Ernest Hubbard of Proviso East, Justin Monaghan of Proviso East, and Melvin Bradley of Westinghouse. Same five on both UPI and AP. Free throw by Tracy Henderson is not good. And Proviso East still trails by 20. There's 228 to go in the third. Quincy. Last time they won the state championship, 1934. In for Henderson. He has six. Here's Payne helping on the press. It's easy for him to see down the court. Here's a near steal in the backcourt. They kick the ball loose, but a foul on Tracy Henderson, his third. So now Corey Cooper and Henderson both have three fouls. And Quincy has the ball out of bounds. For the people that play Quincy, the Douglas brothers are back next year. Here's a violation traveling on Richie Hawkins. 217 left. There's Glenn Wittenberg. Ninth turnover on the Blue Devils. They're 32 and 0. Proviso East, 28 and 4. And there's the 11th year at the helm for Glenn Wittenberg, one of the state's better coaches. A turnaround one-hander that rattles out. Here's the tip out stolen by Daryl McDonald. He turns and shoots. Charging foul on Proviso East. And the roar from the Quincy section. We'll take a look at it again. Here comes McDonald down the lane, and yes, he plowed into him. Big guy drew the charge. Quincy has the ball, and they're going the other way. The men in white from the town on the Mississippi River. Here's Bruce Douglas moving to the left. Holds to Hawkins, guarded by Henderson. A minute 50 in the third now. There's Payne, 20 feet wing left. He gives up top to Hawkins, who comes to the foul line to Huseman. Huseman, now this is Allen. 
Yeah, there's a steal. Yeah, Munigan lost the ball on the uh, lost the ball on the on the fast break. We'll take a look at on the replay. Munigan on a nice steal here, took the ball down the court and uh, had a chance to lay it up in here, but in a hurrying, tried to get the ball up and slipped off his fingers out of bounds. Steal by Proviso East in the backcourt. Here's a hanging shot by Hubbard that's not good. And the rebound comes down to Quincy running. It's Hawkins. Hawkins on the right to Payne. Payne just taps it up in the air to Douglas. And scores! 18 points by Bruce Douglas. Hubbard answers on the other end. Rolling no good. Having just a little bit of problem with our audio. Now we're all right, I think. 59 seconds to go. 50 to 29 is Quincy's amazing lead over a very good Proviso East team. Dennis Douglas back in. Michael Payne goes out for Quincy. Quincy gets the ball into Dennis Douglas. Dennis holds. On the right now coming with the ball is... Joel Myers, number three in the game for Quincy. 44 is Huseman. Dennis Douglas with the ball outside. 225 pounds. He's playing 25 feet from the basket. Here's a foul away from the ball. Let's see what the call is. It's on Tracy Henderson, and that's the fourth foul on Henderson. And if Proviso East isn't already in enough problems, they pick up another personal on Henderson, one of their better players. Behind us, the Quincy fans are celebrating. Here's the ball on the floor, loose, picked up by Myers. Three-second violation against the Blue Devils. 29 seconds to go in the third quarter, and you see Jerry Leggett pointing to his head. And now he folds his arms and looks on. He said at the top of the broadcast, we will win it. They're leading and have the game in hand right now. Will Proviso East be able to stage a comeback? Hubbard in the corner, exchanges the ball back and forth. Maurice Bryson and Hubbard. Now the stop and pop outside. Rolling in. Penalizing shot that goes down by Hubbard. Here's a long shot at the horn ending the third quarter of play at the Assembly Hall with the score Quincy 50, Proviso East 31. One of your network sponsors is Country Companies Insurance. Proviso East has run into the teeth of the Quincy Storm. Nine undefeated teams have been beaten in the championship game. Quincy wants to make sure that number stays at nine. High school sports, great, aren't they? And DeKalb Ag Research and the more than 700 DeKalb dealers are glad to be co-sponsoring this Class AA championship game. And DeKalb hopes you'll join us next Saturday for the girls' championship. Michael Payne just gave a fist to the crowd and says, come on, they've got eight minutes to go. The Blue Devils, eight minutes away from their state title. Proviso East will try to stage a stirring comeback in the fourth quarter against one of the finer high school basketball teams we've seen in a long time. Here's a tip. Wait a minute. We'll do it again. Now the other official says it's blue ball and Proviso East will have it. Daryl McDonald will throw it in. McDonald and Hubbard with the ball now. Quincy still in the zone defense. They've got Bruce Douglas out front with Hawkins on the D. And the ball goes on the left wing. Monaghan tries from 10. It's in. Monaghan gets it in. That's six points for Monaghan. He averages 18 a game. Now here's a free man, Bruce Douglas. Look at him play. There's a lob inside. Hawkins caught it and scores! 52-33, Quincy. Hubbard comes back. Proviso East. They've beaten some tough teeth. Look at the steal by Bruce Douglas. Here he comes. Will he dunk? Oh! He was chopped down by Daryl McDonald, and McDonald prevented the score by Bruce Douglas. What a strong player Douglas is. 
I'm speechless. No, I think I've got my sound back now. <laughs> for all those, I uh, hear the stats. Uh, we had 23 for 45 up to this point for 51 percent for Quincy. Amazing shooting. 12 for 43 for Proviso East. 28 percent. And of course, Mr. Payne with his deflections inside have had something to do with that. 42 to 17 on the rebounds. Quincy advantage over Proviso East. Better get out the record book on the rebounds. 42 to 17 in favor of Quincy, and there's still 7.18 to go. Free throw by Bruce Douglas, not good. And Proviso East brings it up. This is Hubbard. He flings to the left, stopping his Fryson along the baseline as he tied in there. Here is Payne stealing the ball, whacked outside, but Proviso East picks it up, and now Dennis Douglas has a steal. Here comes Quincy, three on three. Stolen by Proviso East, back the other way. The foot race is on. Here's a jump shot, Monahan in. 52-35, eight points for Monahan. It's Monaghan, excuse me. I think what Quincy wants to do now is to at least just trade with them. If, uh, if they get a score and then come back and, and duplicate it, then there's that cushion is gonna stay there. And that, as the song says, time is on their side. The bounce pass in the corner goes to Houston, underneath to Dennis Douglas, and a personal foul called against Proviso. Frank, you were talking about those rebounds a little while ago. Chicago Westinghouse set the class AA team single game record just this afternoon, 63 rebounds. That's the state record now, set this afternoon. Well, Quincy has to get 21 more in six and a half minutes. Nobody can shoot that fast, can they, Coach? <laughs> Free throw is down by Dennis Douglas. Only a sophomore. He's got, he's got remarkable poise out there, Frank. Uh, has all throughout the tournament. He hits two. He's got 17 big points in the game. And Quincy leads by 19 at 6.30 to go. Coming to the left is Hubbard. There's his shot. Is blocked by Quincy. Look at him tip this ball. Here's a lob to the goal to Payne, who can't catch up with it. Payne tried to get it, but he couldn't quite, and it goes to Proviso East. That's 14 turnovers on Quincy. There's been eight on Proviso East. Corey Cooper's out of the game, and Monaghan goes to the baseline, puts it up, and he is, let's see, a foul is called on Monaghan, and Justin Monaghan has four. Fine player, number 43. Country Companies Insurance and its nearly 1,000 agents not only are happy to be part of this telecast, but many other IHSA events, one of which is the girls' A and AA basketball championships. That's next Saturday at 3 and 8 p.m. Hope you'll join us. Once again, you're looking at Dennis Douglas. 61% foul shooter hits it. A big crowd at the Assembly Hall to watch Quincy rated number one in the state. Proviso East number five in one closing call. Douglas hits another. It's Quincy by 21. And into the game comes Corey Cooper, 31. 19 for Dennis Douglas. 18 for Brother Bruce. 37 for the two of them. And again, as you said, that's more than Proviso has altogether. Zone defense, Quincy. Bryson along the baseline. Three men cover him. Look at this. Now he gets it over to Hubbard. Inside Monaghan, Fryson steps in along the baseline, and he's called for a charging foul. Take a look at this as you see Quincy owning the baseline. Boy, he is big down there. When he spreads out, there isn't a lot of room. They've got him listed at 225 and growing. Uh, he's going to be a terror in the next two years in high school basketball in Illinois. Look at him spin around on the backcourt with it. What a birthday present for him. He had his birthday down here yesterday. Number 16, Bruce Douglas on the right wing to Hawkins. They're going to post up. He whip it inside to Bruce Douglas a little too hard. And with 5.39 to go, Proviso East has its hands on the ball. That Quincy Ball Club is totally under control. They have eye contact with their coach all the way, and he's directing the traffic out there, and they never, never lose sight of it. Jerry Leggett, the coach from Moline, really. His parents still live in Moline. Here's a shot, not good. Look at the rebound battle. Coming over to Proviso, it's Corey Cooper. He's going to try. Look at that body control. Swatted outside to Bruce Douglas. He has the ball chopped out of his hands and picked up by Proviso. It's Corey Cooper. He bounced past, and Monaghan wasn't expecting it. 
Cooper was close enough to shoot that one. Yeah, he was. But he penetrating and trying to dish it off in there deeper is what he's done all along. And that tee formed by Jerry Leggett meets timeout Quincy. 5.13 to go in the game. We'll be back in a moment. Now this from your local station. You see that they've won two state championships and appeared in two championship games. In 69, Tom Milliken, who's currently their principal, was the coach then. And, of course, Glenn Wittenberg, their coach now, won in 1974. And some, some of the members of the band enjoying this atmosphere in the assembly hall. Bruce Douglas, guarded by Corey Cooper. A lot of great athletes out on this court. Over to Dennis Douglas. Five minutes and three seconds left on the clock. Quincy, they played their regulars most of all the game. 44 in for them is Houston. Other than that, four starters are in. Bruce Douglas outside, guarded by Cooper. Out past Dennis Douglas. There's Payne, he's looking, he's 20 feet away. Hawkins, Quincy content now to run their offense a little bit. Take some time off the clock, try to get a good shot. They've got things under control, 56-35. Houston outside, fakes inside, and Payne. Quincy running something a little different. As you see, the Quincy cheering section up for grab. Absolute mass of blue behind it. Dennis Douglas, look at him. That's how they feel about this team. Hawkins, high post, 4-13. Quincy taking time off the clock, effectively. They really have no weakness in their game. They have a good baseline, good front court. They have strength. They have quickness. Defense. They have the big man. And Dennis Douglas is inside. They do it all. There's the big man making the key pass there. At 21 points for the sophomore. And what a performance for him. Here's a running one-hander by Hubbard and a foul on Quincy's Tim Huseman. This is Jerry Leggett's fifth year at Quincy. His worst record there was in 1978. He was 18 and 8. His records go 20 and 7, 18 and 8. Now listen to this. 32 and 1, 26 and 3, and now 32 and 0, almost 33 and 0. That's 90 and 4. And Hubbard scores. Or Hubbard's at the line. 58 to 36. Hubbard with 13 in the game. Averages 23 on the year. Dennis Douglas rebounds. 347. These Quincy players also have real good hands. They're so strong with the dribble, Frank. Uh, uh, they just haven't been able to shake it loose. They protect it so well with their body. They're big, big people guarding it, too. Proviso East got to be a tired team, too, right now. They played a tough game this afternoon against Westinghouse. And there's the Blue Devil clapping as uh, Bryson comes out of the lineup for Proviso East. And Ronald Armstrong, a 6'3 junior, comes in. He goes into the backcourt. Now Cooper has it. Ernest Hubbard out front. Here's a left-handed shot up by Danny Austin, the young sophomore. And it's kicked out there to Bruce Douglas to the running Hawkins. He's alone. Hawkins put it in, and he fouled, and it counts. The foul is on Austin. He got there, and it looks like... Uh, Hawkins is shaken up. Let's see if we can see it. Yeah, here's a replay with it. Long lead pass to Hawkins. And uh, that, that foul, here he goes up with it. He looked over his shoulder, had plenty of time. And they hit heads. Inadvertently, a crack together there. And with 312 to go, you'll see that the screen has an address. And we'd like to thank you again for all your cards and your letters. And if you have some comments and you uh, would like to write us, it's Box 577, Bloomington 61701. And all of us, uh, Jim and Dick and myself, would like to say thanks to all of you who have taken the time to say some nice things and uh, write in. Here's Richie Hawkins, foul shooting, not good. Here's a rebound, block. And out of bounds to Proviso East. There's 308 to go. Hawkins seems to have shaken off that collision and he goes back the other end. In case you joined us late, Westinghouse won third over Wheaton Central, 53 to 47. Hubbard turns and shoots. Boy, can he free himself for a shot. Look at Payne. He gets up where others can't on the court. Bruce Douglas on the fly. Goes all the way into the lane and runs it up. 
Rebound, Richie Hawkins. No, look at Bruce Douglas once, twice. Still battling, still battling. Hawkins, score! And high fives all around as the foul is on Danny Austin. And watch this. There's a lot of, a lot of banging around in there and a lot of people trying to get up after it. He goes up and is able to release that thing here. It's tipped back again. It's going to come back to Hawkins in the corner. He takes it and back up on the board for the score. And he's got the chance for the three-point play. It's their year, and there's the guy who's going to win his first state championship. And there is the Douglas Brother Act celebrating. The name of the song, too, a celebration, and that's what it is for Quincy. Well-deserved because they have played oh so well throughout the tournament. And number three, there's another look. That's Hawkins coming along to say well done to Dennis Douglas, and now it's with Houston. A beautiful sight. Dick Campbell, did you ever see a more confident team? When this tournament began, they, they thought they are going to win it. There was just no question about it in their mind. It was hard building a case uh, against them. It sure was. On the left, Corey Cooper comes back for Proviso East and shoots. It's not good. The ball's on the floor, and Dan Sancock picks it up. Dave Sancock at the free throw line with it now. Kicks it on the left to Myers. His shot outside is not good, and the ball goes in the corner. Look at Hawkins save it and bounce to Bruce Douglas. Now Payne's down low, lost it out of bounds. 2.13 to go. There's never a dull moment with the Blue Devils on the court. Now Hawkins goes out and signals to the crowd with 2.13 to go. And there are the happy Blue Devils. Proviso East, Lawrence Mack is 13. On the right side, Austin with some good experience here at the Assembly Hall. Austin only a sophomore. Bruce Douglas comes down on the right. He stops and shoots. And a foul called on Corey Cooper. That would be his fourth. And now we're going to get reserves again. Michael Payne is going to come out with a big, big grin. He's done what he came here to do. The sixth appearance for Quincy. And this is their second state title. On the left, 34. On the right, 81. For a 47-year wait. And when you think of all the great teams they've had at Quincy, Cheryl Hanks had a number of great teams over there. And and they oh, just yeah. couldn't couldn't quite get that last win in, and, and boy, it's really they've savored it over. They'll savor it over there for a long time. Well, you heard Jerry Leggett. Their goal, as you see Hawkins saying, one is to be back here in the Assembly Hall next year, and they have some weapons to do that. But we mustn't forget that Proviso East has had a remarkable year themselves, and they've come all the way to the championship game. And with 1:55 to go, Bruce Douglas will come out. Bruce Douglas, one of the best players in all the state, and he's getting a standing ovation at the Assembly Hall. Bruce Douglas, number 24, goes out, and Bruce got 19. Here's a high lob inside. Quincy has it. Number four, Mark Kaufman for Quincy. Try not to miss anybody that's in there. Spandercock is 14. 10 is Mark Sparrow. Coming in now for Quincy is going to be Mark Foley. There's the shot by 34. Leper, no good, and a whistle. Frank, as we look at Jerry Leggett, we also should say some things about Glenn Wittenberg, about some teams he's had since 1977. They have gone 24 and 4, 23 and 5, 26 and 2, 26 and 2, and now 28 and 4. There he is right there, and he has nothing to be ashamed of, second to a great, great Quincy team. Glenn Wittenberg, 11th year, graduate of Southern Illinois University. Ronald Armstrong shoots. He didn't get it. The ball tracked into the corner and out of bounds to Proviso East. There's a minute and a half left in the championship game. And the stands with the blue. Waits to celebrate. 63-36 is the score. Quincy has overwhelmed the field. The shot is no good by Lawrence Mack. Mark Sparrow comes up on the right for the Blue Devils. A lot of good, valuable experience being gained by the younger players here, too. On the right side, Mark Hoffman and Sander Cox. Sparrow goes to the left for a pop. Oh, all net. Mark Sparrow, the 6'2 junior, is a happy man. 
65 to 36, I believe. Scoreboard says 63 to 36. In the corner. Back to Mack. He shoots way outside. Rumbling, no good. It's under a minute now. The crowd is roaring, and the foul is on Quincy. The place is a bedlam. And there is, that right? is the, <laughs> the Blue Devils pitchfork goes up. The score said that uh, that, that is right, 63-36, the official score. Thank you. It's amazing how much noise there is in this building. 51, Ronald Armstrong. In 1972, Thornridge beat Quincy 104 to 69, 35-point margin in that title game. There's a free throw miss, and the rebound to Quincy, but they stepped out of bounds, giving the ball to the Pirates. Quincy beat Kankakee Westview, beat Antioch, beat Wheaton Central, and now Proviso East in its march to an undefeated title. Shot by Maurice Bryson goes down. 63 to 39 with 34 seconds. In the backcourt, Dave Sandercock. Turns over to Kaufman. 25 seconds left. You see the clock. Nice ball handling by Sandercock. Inside it goes. Turn around one-hander. It's good by Leffer. John Leffer has two. There's the crowd. 10 seconds and counting. 65-39. The crowd counts it down in unison. The shot is not good. A foul with two seconds to go. You could hear the crowd probably in the background screaming down the second. Over the year, Quincy has had a, uh, an advantage of 27 points per ball game over their opponent. During this tournament, it's been up to this ball game, 26 and a half, or 27 points. And tonight, it's 26, so they've been right on form. moment those Quincy fans have been waiting for for a long time. The free throw is good by Leper. 63. The back of the shirt says Hugh City. They will be 33 and 0. A clean sweep. The ball in the air. That's it. It's all over. And Quincy is the state champion. Scoreboard blinks, 33-0, the 10th undefeated team to win the state championship of Illinois in Class AA. And we'll be back in just a moment at the Assembly Hall. One of your network sponsors is DeKalb Agri. Second place teams and the individual awards for the 1981 Boys Class AA State Basketball Tournament. Making the presentations will be members of the Illinois High School Association Board of Directors and Administrative Staff. Presenting medallions to the squad members of the second place team will be Dr. Nicholas Manos of Niles West High School in Skokie, who serves the IHSA as a member of the Board of Directors and Mr. Donald Robinson, who serves the IHSA as Assistant Executive Secretary. At this time, please meet the Pirates of Proviso East High School in Maywood, who finished the 1981 season in second place with a final record of 28 wins and just five losses. The principal of the school is Thomas Milliken. The head coach, Glenn Wittenberg. Assistant coach, Donald Muskie. Number 43, Justin Monaghan. Number 11, Ernest Hubbard. Number 35, Ernest Ashford. 
Number 31, Corey Cooper. Number 25, Tracy Henderson. Number 33, Daryl McDonald. Number 41, Eric Sims. Number 21, Maurice Fryson. Number 45, Donald Conrad. Number 23, Danny Austin. Number 51, Ronald Armstrong. Number 13, Lawrence Mack. Manager, Lonnie Meredith. Manager, Bruce Meredith. And manager, Keith Tillman. Presenting medallions to the squad members of the first place team will be David Turner, principal of Porta High School in Petersburg, who serves the IHSA as a member of the board of directors, and Mr. L.L. L. Astroth, who serves the IHSA as executive secretary. At this time, please meet the Blue Devils of Quincy High School, who finished the 1981 season in first place with a perfect mark of 31 wins and no losses. The principal of the school, Richard Highholtz. The head coach, Jerry Leggett. Head assistant coach, Mike Hellenthal. Number 42, Michael Payne. Number 24, Bruce Douglas. Number 50, Dennis Douglas. Number 32, Richie Hawkins. Number 30, Scott Allen. Number 44, Tim Huseman. Number 34, John Leffer. Number three, Joel Myers. Number 14, Dave Sandercock. Number four, Mark Kaufman. Number 10, Mark Sparrow. Number five, Mark Foley. Manager, Steve Brace. Manager, Kyle Cookson. Manager, Jim Powell. Now the second place trophy will be presented by John Dowling of Watsika High School, who serves the IHSA as Vice President of the Board of Directors. Will Coach Wittenberg and the Captains of the Pirates please step forward to receive your second place trophy. Mr. Dowling, if you please. And now the first place trophy will be presented by Dr. Joseph Sergio of Steinmetz High School in Chicago, who serves the IHSA as president of the board of directors. Will head coach Jerry Leggett and the captains of the Quincy Blue Devils step forward for your first place trophy. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a big hand for both teams. And one more thing, no practice tomorrow. And we'll be back. You see the score, 68-39, the corrected final. We'll continue with our post-game activity following these messages. Four is Quincy, 68. Quincy, 68, and Proviso East, 39. Jim Turpin, a final comment? I'd say we have just seen one of the all-time great basketball teams that ever played in the state tournament. Dick Campbell. Dick 
The scoreboard was incorrect during that game in the second half, just there for a moment, and that final score, that's why we wanted to repeat it, was 68 to 39. So for Jim Turpin and Dick Campbell, this is Frank Bassoni from the Assembly Hall in Champaign-Urbana. And we want to remind you that the state tournament is a memory that will live forever. It will and it should for Quincy, the state champions in 1981. The Blue Devils, the 10th undefeated state champion, 33-0 on the season. Jerry Leggett's team will go down as one of the all-time best in the Assembly Hall. We've had a wonderful tournament. We thank the IHSA and everyone along the network line. You see the final score. We hope to join you again next Saturday for the girls' tournament. But for all of us here, for now, thank you very much and good night. You've been watching another Illinois High School Association championship event. Your network hosts have been the Calb Agri.